This is the Transformers Collaborative, Transformers G.I. Joe, Autobot Bumblebee, Awe Striker, A.W.E. Striker, the all-weather environment. Striker featuring Bumblebee, transforms into a G.I. Joe vehicle with the Lonzo Stalker Wilkinson, 3.75 inch vintage styled action figure from G.I. Joe. So here's a look at the box underneath. The box actually splits up to reveal the pack inner packaging, but we're not going to do that uh, simply because I don't want to ruin the box. Here's a look at the back art and more of the side art. So I picked up this set from Hobby Corner for about $66. Let's crack this set open. And here is the Awestriker Bumblebee and Stalker out of packaging. And you know what? This set is actually not so bad. I was really worried we're going to get the same treatment, the same kind of experience. Much like that horror show, the His Tank Megatron set with the Baroness. But uh, surprisingly, uh, this set is actually pretty good. So before we begin, I wanted to show off the card that uh, the action figure stalker uh, came that came with the bumblebee figure and this is the card it's really nice it's done in this retro graphic of uh, this was how toys were back in the 80s with a smaller clamshell and uh, basically this kind of artwork the thing that bothered me with this is was the way they packaged it unlike the baroness which just they just put it at the back of the box and it was moving around. Uh, this one, they actually inserted the flaps or the corners of the card onto the insert. And as such, it caused this ugly crease. So, I mean, it's a creased card. If you're a mint on card collector, that's never going to happen with this figure because this is going to be prone to that. And that sucks. They should have, They should have just left it freely floating at the back of the box. I don't know why they couldn't have done that. That's that's just really a shame. The figure stands head to toe, about 18 centimeters tall or about seven and one fourth inches tall. Now, just like the Megatron His Tank, as I mentioned earlier, the figure does come with these classic O-ring 3.75 inch figures from back in the day. It's such a retro figure and it's an O-ring because Right here, you can see there is an O-ring. It's a rubber elastic that connects this hip joint onto the body. There's a peg right there or, or a place where, you, where the screw fits in. It just hooks on that and there's a hook underneath that is connected to the ball joint. So back in the day, that's what an O-ring was. Uh, it's pretty cool that they were able to reproduce and remanufacture that. Here is a look at Stalker. I mean, it's not much in today's standards, but back in the 80s, man, these were everything. Uh, G.I. Joes are one of my first loves together with Transformers, He-Man, you know, way before I started collecting Ghostbusters, Mask, and you name it, Centurions and all that, it was Transformers and G.I. Joes. G.I. Joes in particular were really my go-to toys. Especially when I came home from school, I had a bad day, G.I. Joes, they were my jam. Anyway, so here's a look at the Baroness. Baroness is a little taller uh, than Stalker, interestingly enough. Uh, he's got this, this gun. I think this was the same gun that they used in the old vintage toy. I could be mistaken. I don't have the vintage. I never had the vintage, vintage toy, actually. That's why I'm pretty excited to actually get this figure. Uh, the paint was, you know, this was the best they could do back in the 80s. It was pretty okay. But yeah, the articulation for this figure, basic O-ring articulation. Man, whenever, whenever I got a new G.I. Joe figure, I would immediately bust out a pose like this. I would just bend all, <laughs> all the joints and just, you know, because, you know, Kenner figures were they didn't have accessories uh, they didn't have articulation the proper articulation that hasbro figures had. i mean the star wars figures the silver hawks figures i mean they never had this kind of articulation i mean ghostbusters figures uh, but hasbro really really put the bar so high with their gi joe figures and look at that articulation i mean back in the day this was something now looking at these two figures side by side i honestly think they did a better job with this bumblebee figure it really feels more like a transformer 
uh, that's done with purpose. This one just feels like a transformer that they made him cosplay as a his tank. That's basically what I'm getting here. All the parts of the his tank are just all over the place. Whereas for this figure, the parts of the AWE striker or awe striker uh, has been incorporated throughout the robot mode. You see the front part of the uh, of the engine, I guess the engine or the front part uh, of the car has been incorporated as legs. You get to see the rear end of the car as arms, the chest, I mean, the back part right here. So you really think it's a transformer. Whereas this one, it's a nice looking Megatron figure. It looks so G1, but the parts are just all over the place. And it feels like he's got a costume, a his tank costume. My only concern about this figure in robot mode is, well, one, this. It's it's the Earthrise RC all over again. And uh, there was really nothing they could do with the roll cage. There's no way to just put joints here that would make it as stable in, in car mode. And it would completely ruin the illusion. So the best they could do was, it's just a huge backpack that is removable. Some assembly is required. You can actually remove... Uh, you, you can remove this backpack, sh uh, sort of, um, and just like RC, put it off to the side and the Bumblebee figure would be fine. But that's okay. I mean, that thing's forgivable. I totally understand it. Uh, one thing that really struck me about this figure is look how thin the thighs are. And this is one of those cases where the designers had painted themselves to a corner and there was really nothing they could do to increase the mass on the thighs. Uh, because of the design of the transformation, the thighs actually just sit under in the under chassis of the front part of the car. And this is, this is the best they could do for clearance. I mean, if they made the thighs any thicker, uh, it would scrape the floor and it, it wouldn't work. The transformation wouldn't work. So in a sense, I kind of understand it, but man, those are very thin thighs. They're much thinner than Legacy Evolution Tarn's uh, thighs. I mean, look at look at this. I mean, in front, looking at, it, looking at it from the front, it's fine. But once you rotate it, look at that. Very, very thin thighs and then huge, huge lower legs. So, you know, I'm actually quite surprised that the figure is very stable standing up and getting him into some poses despite the, the very thin uh, upper legs. But... Engineering constraints. Okay, that's that's really what's bugging me about the entire figure. Now, everything else, the huge wheels, I mean, some hollow spaces here and there, they're all forgivable. I mean, this figure's actually really grown on me. I actually believe that this figure could be a legit Bumblebee figure. Because for the longest time, I actually felt that the Striker should have been Hound. They should have found a way to just turn him into Hound or hard top or I, I don't know not bumblebee but i guess bumblebee is a more popular character and i totally get it so i'm okay with it now three figures in well two and a half because there's a rumor that the third figure is going to be soundwave with the dreadnought thunder machine uh that's cool and all but i'm just a little surprised that we're three figures almost in Still no word on Optimus Prime. I mean, Optimus Prime should be the first figure, right? For any G.I. Joe crossover. But they chose Megatron. Now they have Bumblebee. Now it's got to be a Decepticon again. And then hopefully the fourth figure will be Optimus Prime. And I'm going to call it right now. I think it's going to be a Rolling Thunder. It's probably going to be HasLab. Or if not HasLab, it's going to be a Pulse exclusive. It's going to be the Rolling Thunder. Uh, they're going to make it lightweight materials like this one. Because there's already been third-party products of a Rolling Thunder, uh, Thunder Madness, I think, transforming into an Optimus Prime. So um, I'm hoping Hasbro gets jealous and they start making their own version of that. But um, enough said. Let's let's just talk about the figure. Articulation for the figure, you've got a just a swivel neck. You've got a swivel waist. The arms can go in and out, go forward and backward. You got a bicep swivel, hinge elbow, and swivel wrists. Uh, legs, you do the splits if you wanted to. Uh, you do forward and backward, your thigh swivel, hinge knees. Uh, no rocker tilts though, but the feet can go a little bit up and down because of transformation. Paint apps. 
not too bad. Uh, the yellow is a little off for me. Uh, I wanted it to be a little bit brighter. The paint on the head is fine. The chest, arms, yellow could be a little bit better. Uh, oh, this is one more annoying thing. When you're transforming it into robot mode, it takes forever. I mean, it takes, it's really a pain to just clip, clip this chest on and you have to aim properly. Shoot this uh, slender peg onto that peg hole. And it, it's really hard if you start with that. So the best way I know how to do it is you press on the back and just collapse the entire back on the spine. And then you hook this tab right here onto the waist piece and that should line it up and that middle tab is just gonna tab in. But if you start with the middle tab, you're not gonna get anywhere. Okay, so that's that. Now, as far as accessories go, he only has one gun. Okay, <laughs> that's not supposed to happen. This one is a very, very tight peg. This is the Awe Strikers uh, mounted cannon. He can use it as a, I guess, a shoulder mounted cannon, or he can use it as a blaster pistol. <laughs> so it's not a bad G.I. Joe Bumblebee figure. I'm actually liking it. Uh, before I forget, plastic quality. Plastic quality is on point on this one. I was shocked. I was completely expecting his tank Megatron, craptastic plastic, but no. Very, very hard, very, very solid plastic. This thing is, you know, I haven't done the pencil test in a while, so you know you're going to get it. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. Very good sound. Music to my ears. I love the sound of solid plastic. Well done, Hasbro. Well done. So transformation. You want to remove Stalker uh, from the back. And remove the gun temporarily. And then you want to go ahead and unpeg everything up like this. And then this whole chest cavity is going to form the back part of, of the car, the vehicle mode. To do so, you want to unpeg... Uh, the shoulders, hold them down like this. Okay, and then the bumblebee head is just gonna sit underneath that rear end of the car. Those are gonna fold like this. Oh, hold on. Fold like this. These bits are gonna come here, here. I think you could tab them on right now if you wanted to. The instructions don't tell you to do that last minute, but uh, I think. It's totally possible you can do that right now okay next what you want to do is you want to fold the feet out and then this these panels right here they're going to fold out like that you're going to fold out like this okay like that like that. The oh. feet are going to fold up like this. And here's where their dilemma comes uh, uh, comes from where the thighs need to be super flat just to get tucked underneath the legs during transformation and in car mode. So that kind of sucks. Okay, so combine the feet or the legs. The chairs are going to peg onto the backpack or the back. And then these pieces, they are going to tab onto the step pieces. Okay. And then same on the other side. The arms, they are going to tab underneath the steps. And then tab the roll cage onto the feet. And this gun goes up like this. And then the steering wheel goes up like that and then the bumper the front grill with the lamps fold down like that and essentially there is bumblebee as an awe striker gi joe awe striker and he rolls beautifully let me just mount the cannon back on top this is where it is it really looks like a genuine article awe striker i mean if you don't look at underneath the under chassis it'll give it away obviously it's a bumblebee uh, figure but look at this up uh the figure from up top it feels like there's some stickers on it the tempos are correct even it says awe striker this is back in the day so many memories uh the awe striker was my second vehicle the first one i had was a 
think or I think the recon sled. And then I think this was the third. The second one was a snowcat, and this was the third. And uh, I kind of regret selling it now. I mean, 10 years ago, I sold it off, I think, or eight years ago, and I needed the money. I sold it off to a buddy who desperately wanted one. So, man, I should have kept it. And it wasn't even the the u.s Ostriker. I, I bought that one in canada and it was it said action force so that was pretty rare <laughs> man i kind of regretting it really regretting it right now anyway so yeah very very cool looking vehicle mode you can have sergeant lonzo stalker wilkinson you can have him ride and drive bumblebee as an Ostriker. Okay, let me put him here. It's it's weird again. I mean, I'm I'm glad they chose Stalker because I've never had this vintage figure, uh, and I've always wanted it. But uh, the Awe Striker normally came uh, with crankcase. Uh, it was a cool looking driver figure, and I'm surprised they didn't use it on this one. That would have really created that perfect illusion that it was a, a GI Joe legit Awe Striker. But Stalker, I think he's a good fit. He's a very popular character. One of the first G.I. Joe figures back in the 80s. So very, very cool. And so some final thoughts on uh, this Transformers G.I. Joe collaborative Striker Bumblebee. I like the figure. Uh, I think it's a better concept uh, than the His Tank Megatron. I think the execution is way better. Uh, the whole concept uh, of the aesthetic of the robot mode just looks way better than Megatron. Megatron feels, like I said in the beginning, like a G1 Megatron that's dressed up in cosplay as a his tank. Whereas this, this Bumblebee has the parts of the vehicle incorporated uh, in his limbs, in his body. So it really feels like a Transformer more than the his tank Megatron. I love the plastic quality on this new Ostriker Bumblebee. It's bordering on premium. I love the solidness of the plastic. And this one really pulls off the illusion that it is a vintage Ostriker. Uh, with, with the exception that it should have been crankcased. But it, I think it does it beautifully. Some issues uh, I have, the thin thighs and uh, the roll cage. They couldn't do much with it. It's an engineering constraint, so it's easily forgivable. Unlike Megatron, which has a lot of it has parts forming piece, the transformation was horrendous, and the robot mode it just looks ridiculous. Uh, so well done on this one. Um, a little bit of my faith has been restored in these GI Joe Transformers collaborative figures. I'm hoping that you, if it is true, that Soundwave and uh, Thunder Machine Dreadnought. Uh, vehicle would be a good one uh, because Soundwave is one of my favorite Decepticons and it would be a shame if, if that collaborative uh, piece disappoints. Bumblebee as an awe striker will get a 9 out of 10. I was very impressed with it. It was more of shock that it's actually a pretty good figure and a really stark contrast to this mess that is the His Tank Megatron. Let me know in the comment section what you guys think of this Transformers X G.I. Joe collaborative Awe Striker, A.W.E. Striker, Bumblebee. Hit that notification bell so you never miss out on any of my latest video reviews. And if it's your first time here, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.